Good evening. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening and welcome. Welcome to Charlie's bedroom. That's a bed above my head. <laughs> so just wait to see if anybody joins us. There we go. Hi, Siobhan. Come on in. Do, 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 do. Can you believe it's back to school? Back to school. I can't believe Siobhan's just coming in there now. Um, so we're going to do a live. Uh, hello. How are you? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you very much. So lovely to see you over Instagram. Yes. What a beautiful evening, actually. It really it's turned into a thing. I know, because it was a kind of a dodgy day, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There was a bit of nothing going on. A bit of nothing. I went out to the 40 foot and it was beautiful weather. So it was lovely. Yeah, yeah. I was well. I was in the gym actually, and I was like sweating it out. I was not lovely. <laughs> no, it was for, for a gym. <laughs> um. So thank you, for, Siobhan, for coming along tonight. And um, there's loads of people joining there now. So I invited you along because you are you know lots and lots of beige school lunches because that's kind of your business, kind of sort of. You know, with the the pots and everything and you do a lot around that kind of content so I thought it might be interesting for you to share with my followers some whatever tips and tricks that you have um, found that works for you over the years with your uh, kids with your daughters and anything else that you know might be of interest um, and people are of course very welcome to ask any questions as we go along I love talk. I actually really love talking about lunches, and I, I, it even kind of gets me excited for the kids being back at school. <laughs> I'm okay, you, you, are the, I, Ireland. you are the one person in Ireland. I might be the only person. I just love routine, and I find summer is really difficult for lunches. And like, I let them get their own, but then I just know they're they're just not as healthy as the ones I would choose. So <laughs> I, I do love, uh, you know, that idea of. Uh, you know, getting up and making the lunch in the morning. So what I, my kind of tips, and this is, you know, um, my experience, I have a 13 year old and a, an 11 year old. So I've been doing it for a while. Um, so I, I just think that it's uh, all down to planning. Uh, it's all down to, you know, having the right equipment, having the right tools, having um, the batch cooking done, having uh, your food flask um, absolutely number one and then um, and then like giving control to the children so obviously you can't have all this and, and like have a fantastic plan and then they won't eat it or anything so there is there is a part of that so yeah 100% uh, yeah, a plan and um, and for me that plan is and I've already started doing it is uh, batch cooking so I would do it anyway but I wouldn't probably do as much of it during the summer um we tend to kind of have a more barbecue kind of foods or um but as i kind of get into the winter i, I do a lot more slow cooker or the bolognese types of foods so they work really well in um in a lunch i, I i've always been sort of saying uh from when the the little babies were um you know, people would say what do you give what do you give your child for tea or what do you give your child for lunch and I'm always like well actually I give them a second dinner <laughs> so yeah. I, I just think it's so much easier to give um, a, a second dinner because it, it contains vegetables very easily rather than a tea and do you remember we used to have a tea like when we were younger and it might have been like beans on toast or which is great um but then it can go into the kind of un unhealthy kind of type foods or or like they might not have vegetables or they might be just out of the freezer like waffle out of the freezer so i just think yeah. a second meal is is a really good idea certainly for like for like for a baby actually is definitely and then you get to the toddler stage and I still think if you can at all give a second dinner but also if they're in the crash they do get a dinner in the crash and then they you know they come home and have another dinner so they're already kind of doing that and then I just mm. think okay so they're starting out of big school they've been in the crash or um 
or a childminder and they've already had that kind of thing so continue doing the second dinner and just put it in a flask um, okay. and it's as easy because if you start switching and going oh oh I've been giving them two dinners and now I have to give them a sandwich and they've never eaten really a sandwich only a cheese sandwich how do you start getting the veg in and then it becomes difficult so that would be my uh, yeah how, how I do it how it yeah. works I love that the two dinners thing. I think that's really good because I think a lot yeah. of people struggle, you know, with trying to get the veggies into the kids and trying to think of a way to give them outside of the dinner thing, do you know? So it's a few carrots on the side of the plate with a sandwich or a few bits of um, cucumber. But if you're giving them two dinners, uh, then you're, you've got all your bases covered. So I love that. It's a great idea. Yeah. yeah, like, I mean, everyone eats differently though. Like I've often been in houses and their kids are great with... Um, you know, that they, they separate all of their food and it's all like lots of raw vegetables, whatever. Fantastic. But if your child isn't like that, how do you s suddenly switch to that? And you know yourself, children don't s suddenly switch to eating something they've never eaten before. It takes no. time. It's mm. a process. So I just think if if you go back to, I like, I actually, I have a, I wrote a book on, on lunch boxes. So I know I did a lot of uh, work on it. So I just think that you mimic um, what children like. So, you know, you, you can like chicken nuggets, okay, but we can mimic that and we can, and, and not that I would put in the lunchbox, but things like dough balls. Um, my kids love, you know, when we're going out to pizza and they'd have dough balls. So you can make dough balls or you can buy dough balls. Then you can make your tomato sauce and then they yeah. can do yeah. um, You can make like tortilla pizzas. You can make... Um, all, all like pasta pesto, making sure that you make your own pesto because uh, the nuts, the nuts in it. What I do is I um, make it with um, pumpkin seeds actually. So uh -huh. I would bend them down really, really well. So you don't even know they're in it. And then I would put, also put raw courgette in it actually as well. So then if the girls are um, making a sandwich, they might use that pesto then to spread it on. So they can have their cheese, their protein, they can have their uh, bread, but then they might have a spread of, of a courgette pesto. So that yeah, point, yeah. that box as well. So yeah, like I, I just think children are um, quite sensory. So if we just like sort of bring it back to that and go, you know, my my youngest actually is extremely like everything was always about her senses she's very um heightened smell and she's like i think if i wasn't her mother i think she would have been a picky eater 100 percent. always has to like dissect the meal or what are we having and it gets a little bit upset but then kind of calms down but um she never really liked soup or she never really liked um smoothies a little bit like that myself, actually. I'm not mad on them. But she loves um, crusty bread dipped into soup. And she loves the crunch of it. So yeah. it's something that fulfills her, her sensory like input. And she loves that. And she, she'll, she'll eat all the soup that way. But won't eat a bowl of soup with a spoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mad. That's mad, isn't it? But there's a lot of research around that whole um, the crunch of foods and how... Yeah important it is for us to have crunchy foods that that it it has all kinds of connotations for us you know in terms of freshness and um yeah. and taste and everything the crunch so yeah that's really interesting isn't it uh, yeah so it's kind of like i always think like step back and kind of just think about your child they're different than you they're different than their sister brother and what do they like and can we kind of adapt that and then like that whole idea of giving children control is so important. It's the most important part. So I would have, um, I would have like obviously the, the bread bin and, and you know, pasta wherever, but then I would have like protein. I'd have a drawer with protein in it. So we'd have yogurts, cheese, um, some chicken, whatever, whatever is in there. I could always kind of remind them that's protein. And then I would have, vegetables and fruit and so if if it is that they're making up their lunch that they choose from each group um and that we don't have just bread and cheese we have bread and cheese and a fruit or a vegetable um yeah, yeah. and then then i'm happy that they can make their lunch but you still give them control you still get you still give them a choice within the the drawer um yeah and then I, and then i would have one other 
thing that I'm really, and I think it's, it's uh, and I think I've talked to you before about this, called uh, food jagging. And you have to be really careful that the child doesn't food jag. So if they're um, inclined to be a little picky, um, they will go for the same food day after day. So they'll be, oh, sure, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have the sandwich with the pesto or sandwich with the cheese and the apple on the side, but that's all I'll eat. And I'll eat that five days. And that's not good either because um, they'll tire of it. Like, you know yourself when you uh, ha you have a craving for something and, and then you have it m more than once and then you're like, mm, kind of done now there with that. Um, but you you would have a broader, uh, you know, um, amount of different variety of foods. Mm. But the child that's a little picky might not. So we don't want them to not like the apple or the cheese sandwich because we're kind of screwed then. We, have, we don't have much else. So... I think yeah. food jagging is really important. So, so as well as you can, you have control and you can choose from each of the food groups. I would say you can't do the same thing day uh, the next day. It, it can't. It can't be the same thing. Um, so you have to leave uh, two to three days between the same food in the same form. If the sweet corn is in a muffin and then the sweet corn is in a sandwich or on its own, it's different. But if okay. the sweet corn is is in the same, it, it, you're eating it in the same way, it is the same food. Just like having, like bolognese is great, but if you have bolognese every day, it's not great. <laughs> so. I have a slightly different take on that, Siobhan, because I think um, with school lunches, the, there's a lot going on in school. And I know parents have been saying to me, oh my God, ham and cheese, ham and cheese, ham and cheese, that's all they'll take to school. And what I've kind of said now, it's, it's kind of is, is not kind of the same as what you say. I'm coming from a diff different angle, but I kind of say, I, I've kind of said to parents, it's like, okay, if the ham and cheese is all they'll take, but then you make sure that they're getting lots of other variety outside of that in throughout the rest of the day. Because I, my daughter was bullied for her lunch in school. Can you believe that? Because she was taken is off that, with the lovely. That, the, ah, I'm, can you I'm hear sorry. me? I did, she was yeah, bullied. She was, okay because she was taking all sorts of lovely things into school and she um there were people were making fun of her so then she didn't want she only wanted to take something like everybody else had so yeah. so that there's yeah so it's, it's it is a little bit tricky in that respect oh. i hear you about yeah. the food as well it's a whole <laughs> so, so, okay. you can come at it at a different angle so what i'm what i'm talking about there is is like setting your child up for a good school lunch experience and what you're talking about there is different where it's it, the child is older and this is what we're doing and this yes. is what it, yeah and and you have so look at every no there's no there's no there is a there is a way that can help you get them have a better uh um, lunch box and that's what I'm talking about there but then there are situations where and, I, and actually I talked about it last I had a live last night but there are some children who don't eat a lunch and then they front load so they would have like a bigger breakfast and a bigger dinner yeah and yeah. that's okay yeah so I guess what I'm saying the food jagging and all of that that's the science and that's the what's mm. going to you you're setting yourself up for something that might they might not eat that ham and cheese sandwich ever again is what i'm saying but if that's yeah. what what has to be that mm -hmm. what is what has to be and then as you said they have a better dinner um and they have a better um breakfast i mean that's that's kind of like what my kids have been surviving on this whole summer because because i wasn't there for the lunch you know they're getting up late uh, i'm having my lunch at a different time so I just yeah we can't put pressure on on anyone it, it's more i was i'm talking about the science behind it and the reason why maybe it stops eating something is because it's it's repeat yeah 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 no absolutely i get that and i know you have spoken about that before um can i just ask you then do it sounds like your girls make their own lunches yes and no um so m sometimes like i if if i'm doing a uh flask meal I'll, I'll just get up and put on the pasta and then I will, um, I, like, so let's say it's bolognese, I will uh, defrost it the night before. So I, I, what I do is I batch cook and then, this is actually too big here, but it, half of that size, do I have one? Half of that size is uh, what I put the bolognese in, um, the toddler pot. 
and then yeah. I take it out of the freezer, put it in the fridge overnight, and then I um, heat up my flask by putting boiling water in it for five minutes, and then I start cooking the pasta. Then I uh, drain the pasta in the sauce when it's heated, and then into the flask. So that's okay. kind of easier for me to do if if the um, if I'm making for the two girls. I give about a four fifty to Ashley, who's in going into second year, and Jessica, three hundred. We will see. She might move up this year. She's in sixth class, so maybe her appetite might uh, move up. She kind of likes the Ashley loves having her. Um, full uh, flask and then just smaller sm snacks. Jessica prefers more snacks and and this the smaller food. So okay. it's whatever it's whatever your child likes. And then I do that maybe um you know two or three times a week and then the rest of them they, they might make their own lunch. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, for people here listening Siobhan who are going, oh my God, how did she get up and make pasta in the morning? So it's yeah, yeah. So every I mean, I'm definitely not making bolognese in the morning, and I'm definitely not making any sauces. Um, between turning on the kettle and uh, making pasta, which is ten minutes, and heating the flat, the heating flask in the middle of it, and heating the food, uh, heating the um, bolognese, it is only like a little over ten minutes. So it's yeah. you know, I like I I'll make. First of all, I'll make the porridge and then I'll just put, and while I'm doing that, then I'll start making the pasta and then they'll sit down and eat the porridge. I do have a very, very nice husband who does clean up. Uh, he's really <laughs> clean up. I like cooking. He likes cleaning. So I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's 10 minutes. It's, yeah. I think if I was to make two sandwiches, that would take me 10 minutes. Mm. Yes. Yeah, true. But it's really good for people to, to think about uh, different options that are available to them for lunches so like I wouldn't even well, actually Maggie would make pasta now and, and bring it she loves pesto pasta but you know with proper yeah. with, you know, um she would love that but um not everybody would think of making pasta or something like that in the no. morning another thing couscous takes no time at all couscous is brilliant so what I do so let's say I have uh, meatballs the night before I'll just make a few extra meatballs and I might have served it with um with pasta the night before so the next morning I'll just make it with couscous uh, okay. curry as well if I have any kind of leftover any um, food I'll always next morning maybe change up the carbohydrate with first just to make yeah. a little and, and the girls do love couscous as well and it's nice with something that has a bit of liquid in it um, yeah. and soups are great as well so I go I always go, yeah, go down the smaller one with the soup and then I might have like a smaller sandwich then with it so that that is different as well um, and definitely leftovers like if you're if you're already cooking the thing before the night before you've made the effort all you have to do is heat it what I would say is pasta isn't it, you know yourself like when you reheat pasta you're actually cooking it again so if you overcook pasta pasta al dente it'll be kind of stodgy so the way yeah. the to reheat the pasta is um, steam it so I, I usually use um, a pot and then a steam basket and then heat it like that. Even if, it, if it's macaroni and cheese and it has a bit of sauce on it, it's fine sitting on the, um, on the basket. And it heats okay. it perfectly and it, leaves, it, it stays nice and, and moist as well. Okay. So, and then tell us, so these are your pots that um, you very kindly sent me a couple. I'm very excited. Maggie's delighted with them. Um, so how do you use these then? You were just saying you just, to heat them, you just put boiling water yeah. into the middle. So it's stainless steel. So it'll, it'll mimic the, whatever you want, if you want it hot or cold. So okay. um, take off the lid. Well, obviously you've washed it and, and all that. Um, it's, it, it is suitable in the dishwasher top shelf. So you can, yeah, pour, it, pour up to the kind of the rim there. Not too high that this isn't going to push it down. And, and yeah. Pour, uh, yeah. So just up to the rim there. And then boiling water. And then close it and just leave it stand. Um, make your pasta. Could be 10 minutes. Could be a five minute meal. But five minutes anyway, minimum. And then try out your water. I usually um, use a kind of a towel and, and dry it because sometimes you don't want um, moisture in there if it's whatever. It, like sometimes I might put um, quesadillas or something and you definitely don't want moisture in there if that's the case. So just yeah. stick it. 
try it. Um, and then, yeah, close it. For the little ones, um, I would make sure that, that, you know, obviously you have to make sure that it's right on the line and that it's closing correctly. But just make sure you don't go mad closing it because you, you can really jag it and it's, it takes an adult to open it. And I have had people go, oh, I've had to ask the teacher to open it. So even for, you know, for the little ones starting out at school, I'd do little picnics or I would mimic like what, what's going to happen at school and then just get them to hold that and go the opposite way with it. So just teach okay. them how to do that because okay. it, it can be a little tricky for a tiny, you know, like a four-year-old, you know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You closed it. You, you never open it. So <laughs> it's just, it needs to be closed, obviously, but not that it doesn't spill, but not uh, so tight that it's locked. Um, there's another thing, just make sure um, that the, there's a little silicone ring there. And if that's gone, then just contact us and we'll get you another one out. Um, as in, it, it could come off when you're washing it or whatever. And if that's gone, then it, it will lose the heat. So that's important as well. So um, then, cold stuff, this is, for example, put yogurt or something in the smaller ones, like yogurt yes. and soup or something like that. So how would, yeah. that, would you put that in the fridge? So if you want to, if you want to mimic cold, and just one more thing on the hot, you do have to fill up the pot at the very top for it to stay hot. If it's half, it'll lose heat. So just the, just with the heat, with the with the cold, it doesn't matter. So I usually pop it into the freezer actually for like five minutes, and it'll it'll be lovely and cold. And then I put in a smoothie or a yogurt. You could actually put um, a little pot into it as well, like, so you could put the pot into it. And um, that's what I advise the, the mums, the smaller babies to do um, with the food. But you could put actually the pot into it and stay nice and, and fresh for 12 hours. Okay, so what would you, so that's for babies, so you'd be putting their dinner? No, no for you, you could have the yogurt oh, in that. Yogurt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put that yeah. in. Um, and then keep it cold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Clever. Cold for, for 12 hours, yeah. So, yeah, so, look, it, I actually, and I wrote, I wrote an e-book on, on uh, flasks. And what, what I finished was, um, <laughs> sorry? Of course you did, in your spare time. Of course I did in your spare time. Um, what I put in it was, because, so I use, you know, like a cup measure. Um, I don't, like, I, I never, um people often make pasta and they don't measure it um but i always measure it yeah it's because you see you over you cook too much or too little so yeah. i always use a cup measure per person so that's a really good guide for if you're you're making a maybe a little bit more from a husband but when i'm doing it with the girls for a flask actually a cup is enough for um with it dry uh, to make two flasks but if it's cooked pasta then it's a, a cup and a half and and then I've kind of made out like couscous, it's a quarter of a cup uh, dry. So I've, I've kind of given you a guide on like, oh, how much would I need to, to fill the fa flask? And cup measures, I find, are really handy. Okay. Um, What's, and then what else? Um, kind of... Siobhan, sorry, there's just a question came in there. Um, would yeah. a senior infant manage the hot flask? Would a senior infant manage the flask, I suppose, be able to open it yeah. and would with um hot food in it 100 percent, like but you do need to give them the flask beforehand and I, as i said sh show them how to twist the opposite way yeah um and don't and do not have it too tight and maybe hold back on the really runny liquidy uh, soups for a little just in case there is is any messing so just pasta and all that, because it doesn't matter if it goes over to the side, if there's a pasta in it. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I, I just think that like, you know, going back to that idea of like, you're starting with uh, big schools. So continue the way you've been doing it. Um, yeah. and, and like, and, and kind of take, take the kind of tips and go with that and then see how, how they go. Another one actually, just for every junior infant, um, just think about it like so they, they've come from a, a very small sort of setting where they there was like probably 12 and there was probably like a couple of minders and now they're in a class of 30 plus and um, they're, the teacher leaves for lunch and, and maybe a sixth class come in hopefully this year it, it, I know it wasn't the case last year um, 
but what happens then is the the little um senior infant then is like oh talking and she's talking to this one beside her and the one over here and then 10 later it's it's um bell goes and they have to go outside and she's not eating her lunch and that will happen so they don't get very much time they get like 10 oh. minutes they might get an extra five minutes but it's not it's nothing it's disgraceful actually i think i think uh, you know if you talk to anybody from france they have an hour for lunch yeah, with yeah. 10 minutes so it's just it's they're t very small and they don't understand like is it is it a what do i eat for break and what do i eat for lunch so that's why i said like talk to them about that and what's going to happen and show them how to open the flask but look at they will come home for the first while with the lunch uneaten it it, it happens it, no matter what it will happen and what what i would would suggest there is um we give them a second chance so you don't go Oh, well, I understand you didn't eat it because you didn't have time. Here's the pizza or here's the here's another sandwich that I made you. Um, and what you're doing there is you're kind of introducing an alternative and they'll go, OK, I won't eat the lunch because I'll get something nicer when I go home. So I always make sure that they ha have a second chance. So um, and the flask keeps it warm for 12 hours so they can come home and then they can um, have another go of it and do that before they get their snack. Yeah, um, yeah, but like obviously, and then another one is not overfilling it in the hope that they'll eat something because then all you're doing there it, it's a bit like at the dinner table if you put down too much on the dinner, um, they will, uh, they'll even if they like it, they'll be like, Oh, I'll never eat all this, yeah, it's, it's all right, overwhelming for them, it's overwhelming. So don't yeah. overfill the, the lunchbox with the hope that they'll eat something. That's that's not great as well. And then it ruins that sort of second chance thing because they're like, I could never have eaten it in the first place. So I, I always think like less is better and then let them come home hungry and say, I actually would have eaten more. Perfect. Well, I'll pack more then. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is better. I'm feeling, oh, I didn't, I didn't have time and I didn't, I, I, I had too much in it and all that. So... I think that's important. When my kids were starting school, I always remember the principal coming in to the, you know, first time parents, like my own, he's now 15, were coming in after the first, they'd been in school for a couple of weeks and he came in to all the parents and said, right, she says, they're not builders going to school. They're only little kids. Stop feeding them like builders. All right. <laughs> People will be sending in like massive sandwiches and, I don't know what else, you know, but enough enough food to feed a builder. That's what he he always said. Um, so yeah, that's a really it's good so, tip about. Um, huh? It's so wasteful because, like, now they don't yeah. let them put in the bin. Actually, thankfully, uh, but they did, and it used to be like a lot of food wasted. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I think less is more is one hundred percent. You know okay they might be hungry if you didn't give them enough but it's not gonna be that hungry like that that it was you know the need for for extra food but but yeah, you, yeah over time like you'll get better at, at gauging and like like us all like we were hungrier one day and not the next you know so that can happen as well yeah. um but uh okay. yeah toast what about toast like a toasted sandwich would that keep in the flask yeah, so again, like making sure the moisture is gone, um, it's going to keep keep it warm. It, it because it's not full, like it's not, it might it might lose some of the heat. Um, okay. but yes, you could have. I do quesadillas, which is kind of similar yeah. as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie yeah. loves quesadillas. And, what, Definitely. and actually, another nicer way to do those is to put them into tin foil and then into the flask, and it'll keep it even fresher. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm by the quesadillas with him now for um, September. Um, another thing just on food waste, uh, I just had a thought while you were saying that is sometimes if the kids bring home a sandwich that they haven't had time to eat, um, I might just put it on the pan and fry it. Yes, great idea. Then, yeah, so if, if it was like a, whatever tuna or tuna and cheese or whatever it was and che or ham and cheese or whatever, and if you just put a bit of butter on each side of the bread, pop it on the pan and it's, it's delicious then, it's really yeah. tasty. Even even like if you have crusty bread and it's been in the it's gone a bit soggy, stick it back in the oven and it, it'll uh, it'll harden up and be nice and fresh again. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I think that we, we need to we need to be careful that we don't 
offer something new or, or, or another uh, alternative. Um, and doing those things are fantastic. And sure, we all need to stop wasting food as well. So I know. it's all, all positive. Well, it's all so, going so expensive now, Siobhan. Um, people are definitely looking at ways not and, to waste food. It's gone bananas, isn't it? it so bad I, I it's kind of scary actually so uh, that's why like if you're like uh, you, I mean you can go and you can spend a load of money on on different things for the lunchbox in terms of food or you can just go do you know what I'm just gonna cook a little extra and put it you know and, and have it in the flask or um or yeah, it's it, yeah, and, and just making the children mindful of that as well, like that you know we we can't we, we can't waste the food. Um, I think it's important as well. It's yeah. it's hard. I heard somebody say during the week I was listening to something about um oh it was after I'd been on the radio actually somebody sent in a comment and said, um please tell the parents to stop sending in those corner yogurts. You know the corner yogurts that have the thing that you open oh. and they've got a little sauce or something one side and you tip it over um because she was saying they're so hard to uh yes i will save this live there's been a few people have asked me yes i'll definitely be saving it um that they're so hard for the kids to open but also there's so much packaging on them and those lunchables yeah. shops as well there's so much packaging on them and you can so easily recreate them at home and then you know with your yogurt you could make put, pop your yogurt in here and put a little bit of sauce on the side or something like that to, yeah put down on um on cost and waste and packaging and everything yeah like get a big tub of yogurt um and it is that you need to sweeten it up you can put like a few pur fruit puree into it or mashed uh strawberry into it to make your own um I, yeah you know those like cheese strings and things where where you're like or or even like you can get like um pre-packaged slices of cheese it's like what <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! Can we not just like, can we not just get a packet and just put them in a tub or something? I, I just don't get that at all. Fruits, like, fruits is another one that Joyce just mentioned. I'd say fruits are the um, the bane of every pair of every teacher's life because they're actually really hard to open, and then they go really everywhere. Hard. And it also, I, I have a fear of getting a cut in my mouth to opening those things. Anything that I have to pull like that, I'm like, oh, um, yeah. Look at those are all sort of market, marketing things anyway to make them look more attractive for children and all they are is a yogurt in, yeah. at the end maybe they're a little bit sweeter but um, they yeah it's just marketing you should look at Peppa Pig yogurt like what was that about? I know <laughs> um, yeah no it's it's kind of uh, the other one I, I think is important as well and it's to do with the whole senses is uh you know, making sure that um, smells and all that is kind of locked away. So I'm not a huge fan of like uh, those, um, are they called bento boxes where you've got loads of different spots in it? Just because like, if you've got a, a sensory child um, and then the strawberry juice is dripping into the, into the sandwich or you've got an egg sandwich and the, the smell is overpowering, they're, they're literally gonna open it and close it again. So if, if you think about your child again like that, so I, I always like use a, a separate pot and then I'd have like a lunch bag like this um, that, that you can put loads of pots into it and you can put your, your um, flask in as well. Yeah. And then I have a, a cooler pack here as well that'll keep muffins and whatever, a sandwich in it that's nice and nice and fresh. So locking away smells for me, especially if it's tuna or something, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You, you've all the gear there, Siobhan. I've all the gear. <laughs> I've all the gear on mummy cups. Yes. <laughs> so we were saying we would do a little giveaway. Yes. So I'm going to give away. Anybody who follows me will know uh, the safe knife and peeler that I have. And um, I, you may or may not know Siobhan, but I am encouraging children across the nation to make their own school lunches come Great. September. So in whatever format that, that might be um, and yeah, they could get their knife and peeler and then they can use their flask and they can, you know, put in whatever leftover dinner or whatever it is um, that they're having in their flask. So what do you think should we ask people to do um, before to pick a winner? Hmm. Are you are you uh, picking a winner from people who've joined or asking questions? 
Why don't we ask people a question and then we pick a winner from that? So for the people who've joined okay. and sh they, they should be the ones who get. <laughs> the, yeah, I don't, I didn't, I obviously didn't prepare I, for this. I yeah, no. <laughs> Maybe what's their, what's their um, go to lunch uh, option? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good, uh, that's a good question. Inspire. Lunch yeah. Yeah. It'll inspire us. <laughs> so pop them in the comments there and I'm just going to take notes because they'll come up really quickly there. Um, so what, what are your girls, like what is their favourite lunch to take? Yeah, no, they, they love, um, they love Alfredo sauce and they love, uh, uh, um, I do a cauliflower mac and cheese. I always kind of do it for a main meal and then I'll, I'll reheat it the next day. Um, yeah. What else do they like? Uh, noodles, they love noodles and anything with couscous. Okay. Great. Um, you know, there are some things that they don't like, obviously, but uh, I, I'd say that my kids aren't great with um, like raw carrot or raw um, vegetables as probably because I went more with the d the dinner style thing. So um, okay. Ashley is kind of beginning to do that. Uh, but they do love muffins as well, actually. Muffins are a great one to freeze. And sometimes yeah. I'm a breakfast muffin. Uh, with with porridge oats or something in it, pasta with grated oh. great tomatoes, so simple. And and like that's something you can do in the morning as well. So you're cooking the pasta, and then you're just you're just throwing in uh, the tomato and some cheese as well. Yes, oh, overnight great idea. Overnight oats, love it. Overnight oats is great um, as like a, you know, if your child isn't great with the lunch, um, you can pop, pop that into their, into their lunchbox and then they are, sorry, with their breakfast. And then when they have their um, first snack, they can have like their overnight oats then. I love pasta pesto and mini scones, yum. Yes, pasta pesto, I think wins the day. Just think about changing up the pasta pesto. As I said, like courgette pasta pesto, you can use kale, you can use, um, broccoli, broccoli or, yeah, broccoli, avocado, um, rocket, um, lettuce. You, it's there's loads of ways of changing it up, um, and like like you're trying to to do there, getting children to to um make it as well. You know, let's think yeah. of different making it and get them involved. I used to always do like we used to do the taste test. Does it have enough parmesan? Does it have enough lemon? Does it have enough oil and get the girls to do that? And they used to love doing it. Oh, um, that's, that's a great way to get them. Yeah, I'm all about getting kids involved, as you know, in cooking and um, yeah. exploring what they make and, and yes. telling them they're in charge. So they have to taste and see, has it got enough? Exactly like that, because I think that's very empowering for kids. And um, yeah. they love loads of great entries there. Um, okay, so anybody last last opportunity now to enter our competition to win a food flask and a two pack uh, knife and peeler from me. So the flask obviously is from Siobhan at Mummy Cooks. Uh, so we're looking for your favourite uh, lunch suggestions for your kids now, not for um, not for yourself. It's so nice of saying that she's all she always has the scissors in hand in school otherwise you're wearing it <laughs> so she's like the flu will obviously go all over the place unless she yeah. has a scissor <laughs> well, like out of school and they've got the fru or the yogurt down the front of their oh. um, there you see uh, parents it looks lovely and it's really handy in the in the lunchbox but i'd say teachers are oh my god stop uh, stop saying in the oops <laughs> uh, they were actually banned at one time in my school and then if you did bring in a yogurt before they banned them i think which i don't necessarily agree with either but um if you did have a yogurt you have to you had to stand in a special place in the classroom to eat it because they were so many. that's <laughs> that's really bad my god Just no we shouldn't be like that with food whether it's good or bad it's, it's you're almost no. making like it oh no that's awful i know because then you're what you're saying there is that yogurt is a messy thing and we shouldn't yeah. be eating it really. yeah, and I you shouldn't be messy we should be messy like it's not, it's yeah. not oh yeah but unfortunately like oh god like we, we don't have it the best we should be going to a canteen where we can get messy where we can you know like the other one is the water bottle 
do you ever like so little infants are not allowed to have their water bottle only at the the break two breaks yeah so the poor things come home and they haven't drank enough so just i that's another one with the second chance they always make sure that they've drank the the water bottle uh, when they get a bit older they're allowed to have it on the table it's just more yeah. for spin. I can understand why um, that's the case, but um, yeah, we're just not set up for, we should be going to a county. We really should, you know. No, but I, I, I go in and out of schools all the time and um, I yeah. was in a school there recently and they had no canteen. They had no canteen, they had no kitchen, they had not yeah. done anything. Like It's such a wasted opportunity. Um, homemade nachos made with tortillas and leftover mints from dinner the night before. Emma, do you put that in a lunchbox then? Is that what you do with that? Um, I'm interested to know because that's, uh, that's a favourite yeah, dinner not, in our house. But they not get soft if you put it. Yeah. Maybe she separates them and then the child puts them together. I'd say that's what yeah. happens. Yeah. Lovely. Um, yeah, that's a great one. Cheesy cauliflower bites. Yeah, I'll, I'd have some of them myself. Thanks very much. Yeah. Crackers, apple and mandarin. Yeah, it's simple, but like you need a bit of maybe a little bit of protein there. Um, crackers, maybe a little yeah. bit of cheese. She has the cheese. Oh, she has the cheese. Sorry, did I really read that wrong? Cheese and tomato and fruit and crackers. Is oh, that the one you're reading? Sorry. Um, raisins and baby bells are banned. They get mushed into the floor. The wax off the baby bell. Oh, you understand the teachers are going nuts with with what's coming in and and uh, yeah, it, it's all marketing though, isn't it? Like all of those things yeah. that are. I'll just bring it back to the bear, like fruit and veg and and dinner and and like sandwich, and yeah. we'd be. Well, there you go. Don't have the baby bells. Just cut up your own cheese and put it in. Yeah. Little... Yeah, and then you don't. Baby bells those taste different though. I don't know what type of cheese that is, but it's not. It's not the cheese I know. It's like an, <laughs> nearly like an Edam more, isn't it? Yeah, maybe actually. Yeah. 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 Uh, Getty bolognese. That's really interesting, Anya. Is that? Um, do you send that into school in a hot pot as well, or how do you serve that in school? Um, leftover quiche. Oh, yum! Yeah, I love that myself. Um. Okay, shall we pick a winner there, Siobhan? Have you any? I'm going to read out some of the um, got egg sandwiches, pasta with grated cheese and cherry tomatoes, overnight oats, cheesy cauliflower pie. Yeah, I think I want to go for the homemade nachos. The nachos. Like Emma Duffy, 88. Emma well Duffy. Done. I just like that because it's different. <laughs> I have to try that myself because my kids love nachos. Yeah. You can put the side, you can put the mince in the flask um, and then the tortilla so you could just have them put it together might be too much for a, a, a junior infant but maybe a little older child would, would manage that yeah yeah they love it um because we make our, our nachos in the air fryer they're brilliant they're so easy to make you can flavor yeah. them with um so emma duffy will you um dm me when we're done here and we'll organize to get um your prize out to you so, um, oh yeah, she does. She separates them. Yes, <laughs> nachos in an air <laughs> mint in a flask. Um, brilliant. Hey, great that's idea. a great idea. I'll, I'll yeah. might rub that off you, Emma. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Okay, so listen. Um, massive thank you, uh, Siobhan, for coming on. If anybody has any questions for on, she's quite the lunch uh, guru. Um, that's why I wanted to have her on tonight to have a chat seeing as we're doing all about back to school and lunchboxes yeah. that's where I love I love that, that idea of, of getting children to cook or to make their lunches because at the end of the day that's when they will eat it is if they've prepared it so I think that's absolutely. fantastic yeah yeah it's great yeah really absolutely um, okay that's great um, yeah no that's nobody else has a question okay listen guys thank you so much this live will be saved and you won't lose any of Siobhan's amazing tips and suggestions and if you want to get your own flasks her gorgeous flasks they're available on mommycooks.com yes dot com um, and they oh and they come with these little uh, cool little stickers the kids will love um, personalising them they could pop their name on them or you know put fruits and vegetables or whatever um so yeah that's great. Uh, we have 15 percent off um on our bundle builder so if you go into lunch bundle builder 
you can build your lunch box and if you spend over 35 you get 15 percent off and then over fi over 50 you get free shipping as well so they want to have a look at that okay so spend over there okay i'm just going to put this in the caption yeah no it's, it's part of our book on the website so have a look oh, at that. okay brilliant thank you so much Yvonne. Thank you. no thank you thanks for having me bye everybody bye. Are you going to be at the uh, pregnancy and baby and pregnancy fair this year? Yes, I'm not sure yet, actually. Hopefully, hopefully. Okay, all right, okay. Well, I've just um, gone to it too. Okay, so there's loads of people joining. Sorry, we're just finishing up. <laughs> we are say I will save this um, now shortly and it'll be available as a live for you guys to watch back and get any tips. And if you have any questions for either myself or Sean, um, just drop us a message yeah. and we will sort you out. Okay. Super. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.